What's up guys, welcome back to another GGF video. Now today we're gonna to be taking a look at the ASRock X299 Fatality Gaming i9 motherboard. Now this has been out for a while, it's pretty much been out since the launch of the X299 series. So we've got the board here, we've run through a few tests because this board has some interesting features. It does have 10 gigabit ethernet built onto the board. Uh, there's not many boards, or if any, that have 10 gigabit ethernet built in. So we run some tests through that and then we check out some other stuff as well. So this is a mid price board. So it's not top of the line price so, and it's not sort of the budget end. It is sort of smack bam in the middle, which is pretty good because you are getting the 10 gigabit ethernet. Anyway, before we jump in and have a look at the board, we'll have a quick word from our sponsor. Time to cable this bad boy up. Hmm. Are you sick of buying poor quality sleeve cables that just don't last? Build like a pro and upgrade to pro. Introducing the new Pro Series sleeve cables from Cable Mod. Simply choose a pro compatible cable on the Cable Mod website, configure the sleeve color to your liking, and slide the upgrade to pro option. Also, don't forget to choose your plastic or aluminium cable comb color, which are available in white, silver, or black. Once you go pro with Cable Mod, you'll never go back. For more information, head to cablemod.com. The ASRock Fatality X299 Gaming i9 is currently ASRock's top of the line X299 motherboard. Similar to the X299 Tai Chi layout, we see a few upgraded features which include 10 gigabit ethernet and next gen USB 3.1 front panel header. We'll cover more on the 10 gigabit ethernet later on. A quick rundown of the gaming i9 motherboard, we have a 13 phase power design with a single 8 pin EPS power connector. This is the same as the X299 Tai Chi and in our review of that board, we had no issues overclocking our 7900X to 4.8 GHz. Cooling wise, we see a large VRM heatsink, but no heat pipe offloading heat elsewhere. I started doing VRM temp testing with stock settings, and then my overclock 7900X at 4.7 GHz, but there was basically no difference at all, only a few degrees between the two. At 4.7 GHz, idle temps were around 30 to 32 degrees, while low temps were hitting around 40 degrees. While gaming, the VRMs didn't go over 40 degrees either. These temps are dramatically cooler than when I reviewed the X299 Tai Chi on my premature test bench. I can only conclude these much cooler temps are caused by the Cooler Master all-in-one cooler mounted up the top, pulling air directly over the VRM heatsink. Memory support we see up to 4400 MHz plus OC with support of both quad channel and dual channel memory configurations. This is depending on if you're using Cable Lake X or Skylake X CPU. Storage wise, there's a total of 10 SATA 3 connectors, 8 running off the Intel chipset, and 2 via an ASMedia ASM1061 controller. There's also 3 Ultra M.2 sockets supporting both PCIe and SATA base SSDs, with one of these sockets supporting 110mm M.2s, with the other two supporting 80mm M.2 SSDs. Three-way SLI and Crossfire configurations are supported on the gaming i9, but this will depend heavily on what type of CPU you'll be using. Ideally, to get the most out of your PCIe slots, a 28 or 44 lane CPU will be desired. Also, these PCIe slots also feature ASRock steel slot feature, for extra durability. As I mentioned earlier, the board features 10 gigabit ethernet. So far, I think this is the only X299 board to offer this, or at least to offer it as an onboard solution. The chip is an Aquantia AQC107. I tested this with some basic Windows file transfers and a throughput testing program to another system running an Intel X520 T2 10 gigabit ethernet adapter. Both systems each had an NVMe PCI SSD and file transfers between the two systems were impressive. Copying a bunch of Steam backups shows us copying at basically full speed, 1GB a second. The total file size in this copy is roughly 16GB and took only 15 seconds to complete. Not bad at all. Now with the throughput program we're seeing just over 8GB a second up and 4GB a second down. As with most 10 gigabit adapters, they do run hot, and that's something I wanted to test out on the gaming i9. With no data copying at all, saw the chip's heatsink run in the low 40s, and while copying data, saw this chip rise to around 60 degrees. Apart from the 10 gigabit ethernet adapter, there's also two standard Intel 1 gigabit ethernet adapters. Soundwise, ASRock has included a 7.1 channel Realtek ALC1220 audio codec, which supports Creative Sound Blaster Cinema 3. On the rear IO, the main highlights include USB 3.1 Gen 2, Type-A and Type-C ports, Intel 802.11 AC wireless, 
and a flashback button which allows you to flash the motherboard's BIOS without the need of a CPU or any memory to be installed. If you're after a board with a plethora of USB, then this might not be the board for you. USB on the rear is lacking and I would say this is mainly due to all those network adapters on this board. As with the Tai Chi, the gaming i9 also features RGB. Nothing overboard, just a subtle glow from the chipset heatsink. There's also two separate RGB headers on the board and these and the chipset RGB can be controlled via ASRock's RGB software. The RGB on the gaming i9 works as intended but if you're a diehard RGB nut then you might find the RGB on this board lacking. Other features on the board include onboard power and reset buttons which are always a nice touch, Dr. Debug LED for diagnosing error codes, a fan pump header and dual USB 3.0 front panel headers with one of these being on an angle. Alrighty, that's pretty much it on the gaming i9 motherboard from ASRock. A few last things I want to cover price-wise, you're looking at about $505 Australian and for you US folks, you're looking at about $390 US dollars. That's not too bad, that's pretty much puts it in the mid-range uh, ballpark of the X299 range and just remember you are getting the built-in 10 gigabit ethernet as well. Uh, now one last thing I do want to cover, since completing the uh, video on the X299 Gaming i9, ASRock has released a new range of boards. They're pretty much based on the same type of, uh, type of layout, but they're just sort of a beefed up board. They're called the XE series or the XE for Extreme Edition. And I've got one over here, I've only got the Tai Chi variant, I don't have the Gaming i9 variant. And as you can see there, the layout is very, very similar. So the Tai Chi pretty much replicates the X299 Tai Chi and then the XE Gaming i9 replicates the, uh, the same as this one here. Main differences are we have double 8-pin EPS instead of a single one, so you're gonna get a W power delivery, and we have a much, much larger VRM cooling design. So instead of just a single one over here, as you can see over here, there's just a single one. You have this heat pipe that runs on the side and then down, and there's a much larger, oh, there, there's no actual IO heat sink over on this one, and over here you've got quite a large IO uh, cooler on here, offloading heat from the VRM. So basically, the gaming i9 is very similar to this layout here when it comes to the uh, the heatsink design. So it is nice that ASRock are bringing out sort of uh, a new sort of design on their original X299 range. So I can only assume that they will be sort of phasing out the original X299 and then phasing in the XE or Extreme Edition ones. Because I looked at price rise and you're looking at about $40 more for the Extreme Edition. So that's not too bad. But anyway, that's it on this video. I want to thank ASRock for sending out the gaming i9 to review. I want to thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for next time.